John chapter 4 tells the story of Jesus' encounter with a woman of Samaria, the woman at the well. It's very interesting to compare what happened in chapter 3 and chapter 4. In, in chapter 3 you have Jesus encountering a man, in chapter 4 it's a woman. In chapter 3 it's a man who came secretly by night. In chapter 4 it's a, a woman who came, you might say, openly in the middle of the day. In chapter 3 it's somebody who is educated, respectable, sophisticated and well thought of. In chapter 4, it's a woman who has had five husbands, it's somebody who is presumably of poor reputation. Do you see, it's like John is, is sort of saying, everybody needs Jesus. <laughs> and it doesn't matter where you come from. And so he's comparing back, when you compare backgrounds, you see this amazing contrast, but they both have to come to Jesus, and Jesus has the answer for both of them, but it comes in a completely different, different way. And uh, one of the most crucial differences was that Nicodemus in chapter 3 was Jewish and uh, this lady who is unnamed is, uh, is non-Jewish or a Samaritan or half Jewish. So, but both here and we're not told that Nicodemus responds but we're told that this lady responds with a full heart openly and everything changes in her life. So... And who is this Jesus? That's the background question that John's asking. Maybe he's saying this, God is known through encounter. And you might come from a Nicodemus type background or a woman at the well type of background, but you both meet Jesus through this encounter. And in the story of this encounter, new aspects of Jesus' identity are uncovered. One is the idea that Jesus has a mission not just to the Jews, not just to insiders, but to outsiders as well. Another huge thing is that they're meeting at Jacob's well. And that is a significant point, isn't it? Because it, it refers to the refreshment that you draw from the Old Testament. Do you see that picture? The Jacob's well. What do you draw from the Old Testament? And Jesus made this point, he, this woman had come to the well to draw from this well, to draw water. And he says, the water that you draw from this well will only work to a certain extent. You will get thirsty again. So there's a perspective that the Old Testament is only good up to a certain point. But he said, but the water that I shall give will quench your thirst and you will never thirst again. And later he said, you'll become a well in yourself. Your belly will fl you know, flow living water coming out of you. Okay, but first we have the encounter. Here is, he sits down, his disciples have scuttled off into the village to get some food. He sits down, he's hot and sweaty and tired. He sits down, a woman is at the well. He says, give us a drink, love. And in one little statement, he breaks Jewish etiquette forever. He is not supposed to speak to a woman in public. <laughs> Even if that woman's his wife. Did you know that? They weren't supposed to speak to him. It was bad manners. He wasn't supposed to speak to a Samaritan because they're unclean outsiders. And he said, don't speak to foreigners. The foreigners were called dogs. Imagine, don't touch receptacles used by them or you become unclean for the rest of the day. Well... Isn't that incredible? And he does both. He speaks to a woman. <laughs> he, uh, he sort of comes into a conversation with her. He shares the water cup with her. He breaks the, the, the rules of etiquette because his primary mission is to share love. Sometimes our prejudices prevent us from sharing love, doesn't it? They stop us where we are. And he... He starts to, he uses the word give. In chapter 1, John uses the word see and believe. And in chapter 4, he uses the word give. And it comes up again in, in chapter 6. The gift, if you had the gift, is the, you know, past, uh, what is given, what is given to you. Jesus is both the gift and the giver. And what does he give? He gives water. So to this sophisticated intellectual called, uh, called, called Nicodemus in chapter 3, Jesus said, you must be born again. 
you've got to start again. So the woman in the middle of the day in a hot, dry day, he says, you must drink again. But not just water, but real water, spiritual water. So to Nicodemus, he says, spiritual beginning again, spiritual birth. To the woman, he says, water again, but spiritual water, real water. So water is so common, isn't it? And so necessary. And you never um, experience it, certainly not in Ireland, what the lack of water looks like. <laughs> we worry too much about flooding. <laughs> but the lack of water is something crucial and critical in, in, in the East. And it's, you think of it, water in, in John's baptism in chapter 1, and in the water made into wine in chapter 2, and the part of the new birth in chapter 3, born of water, born of the Spirit. And now, chapter 4, he's talking about water in terms of being spiritual satisfaction. Have you drunk of the water? Are you, are you drinking? And is, are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? And uh, it's interesting, the conversation develops, and she starts to try to deflect him from knowing too much about herself. He says, oh, I see that you're a prophet. <laughs> He says, you've had five husbands. The man that you're with now is not your husband. She says, oh, I see you're a prophet. He says, well, tell me this, Mr. Religious Man. You Jews worship in Jerusalem. We Samaritans worship on Mount Gerizim. Which one's right? So he tries to, she tries to throw a religious question in, and he just sweeps it to one side. He says, it doesn't matter. Jerusalem, Shmerushlam. It just doesn't matter. Gerizim, it doesn't matter. Religion is not the point. The point is, you, are you drinking? Are you satisfied? Have you received? And he calls to her and refuses to be sidetracked. He's not sidetracked by her being a foreigner. He's not sidetracked by her being a woman. He's not sidetracked by her being of low reputation. He's not sidetracked by her being thirsty. He just merrily steps over every hurdle. He says the real point is, do you want to receive? Do you want to receive? And she says, well, when Messiah comes, he'll explain all this difficult stuff. And he says, Messiah is here. Messiah is with you. What do you say now? Nothing puts Jesus off. This could be a potentially racist confrontation. And it's just gone. It's just gone in a second. This could be the exposure of her moral failure. He could really pin her down. You wicked woman! It's not important. Her sin is not important. What is important is that she receives from Jesus and that she goes from that encounter satisfied. And she does. Read it. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. Chapter 4 of John. God bless you today.